Oh, Jack and Jill and the Red Post Box came about because as a researcher, we are aware that um, living with dementia poses many, many challenges and it, it, people are faced with a lot of ways of thinking about the risks that they're confronted with. And we know from previous research that we've done that it creates a lot of what we have called contested territories for people in their day to day lives. We had the opportunity working with the NHS North of Time to develop a piece of research which meant that we could uh, work closely with people living in their own homes, perhaps with a family member, um, and try to really understand how that day-to-day -day living worked for them when they were thinking about risk, thinking about resilience. And that was the start of this journey, if you like, uh, was around conducting that piece of research. So opening up what we mean by risk and resilience when living with dementia, we worked with a number of families across Northumberland communities, spending probably about 18 months repeated visits, interviewing, but also spending time with the person with dementia and family, neighbours, going on journeys with them when they went shopping. Sometimes they would talk about a particular frustrating time, going to a pub, being with friends, but feeling outside of the conversation, really getting quite worried that they might say the wrong thing. But people also talked about coping strategies. They talked about quite humorous things. They might bake a cake and forget to put the eggs in. There's a bit of laughter about it. They talk about, well, maybe what I'll have to do is to write lists or, or bake the cake with somebody else. In general, what we found is that there were a lot of commonalities and I think our notions of risk and resilience though not talked about in everyday language were coming across through the richness of everyday encounter and what we decided is that we couldn't do these stories real justice that we'd flatten them if we just talked about them in a report or an article so we had some ideas about creating an audio montage and this is where I met with Claire from Skinstone Arts and we had that discussion. Yes, I think the transcripts gave us a very rich source material to look at. Um, obviously they were anonymous, but there were key lines in there that gave us a real insight into possible characters. One of the lines I always remember is... Um, Give me a screwdriver and I'm baffled, but now a spade. And what we started to do was really to look at how those phrases indicated some subtext of what was really going on. So in that example of where somebody might be feeling that his life that he thought was all in control has suddenly gone out of control because of a diagnosis of his wife. He now feels what is questioning what it's about. Give me something I know about. And really that um, journey also then involved us looking at some of the themes already identified by the research. So looking at themes of uh, loss of identity, feeling disconnected, a sense of loneliness, but also about resilience and the risk in resilience. So what we did was create a play uh, with a cast of actors that started to look at family life in a two day sort of time period with the key plot being about Jill, the protagonist, going out with Mary, the neighbour, for the first time to post a letter and what actually happens. What was particularly significant, I think, about this project was how working with partners where that research has a lot of depth around the stories, we were able to then really take it deeper into looking at further research around our own experiences of working with or living with or having family members with dementia and drawing upon what could we really learn about how we could, from this story, from this film, think about the resilience. Even though things go wrong in this particular scenario, there's still a learning for hope and how family members, neighbours and the wider society can support those characters, but in real life, those people with a diagnosis of dementia. And I think as well, as Claire was saying, that although um, the, the themes came from the research and were 
very much fictionalised and added to in terms of Claire and her colleagues went off and did some of their own sort of reading and thinking about well, what is it like to live with dementia. I think there was also a strong sense that what we wanted to do was to still stay true to those people who had given us so much. I mean, I personally felt very privileged that I had spent time with these individuals and their families and others. Mm. And they had, just through their own stories, given us such a real sense of the, both the risk and the resilience that people live with in everyday lives. What we really wanted was it just to ask questions. That's what, as uh, theatre makers and story collectors, we do around what do we or how do we relate to those characters how do we relate to those themes so some of the performance um, is is very much marked by some of the rich tapestry of these lots and lots of different storylines narrative lines that are about telling that story a fictionalized story of living with dementia what we found is that obviously we have very different kinds of expertise, um, very different backgrounds and skills, um, but so has everybody else who's been involved in Jack and Jill and the Red Postbox. And of course, central to that are the people with dementia, their families, um, who were part of the, the research in the first instance, but also everybody brings to it their own understanding, their own way of interpreting it. So of the many audiences who have now seen Jack and Jill in the Red Post Box, they too become participants in it. Because this is a storyline, if you like, that we each share our own version of and we each interpret a version of. And so anybody watching this is bringing to it their own expertise and experience and skill and using that to understand what they see in Jack and Jill and the Red Post Box. So we're now very committed to making it available for as wide a group of people as possible. There tend to be two dominant routes through which that's happening. One is by trying to reach through the, the very drama and arts-based groups. And it's also about audiences which are perhaps more focused on working with people with dementia, perhaps people living with dementia themselves. And everybody coming to that and thinking, what can I learn from this? What can it help me learn about myself and how I can move forward? Because that's what we want you to now do is you watch Jack and Jill in the Red Post Box. Think about your experience, your position, your skills, whatever that might be, and help how that helps you interpret watching Jack and Jill in the Red Post Box, but also how you then present that to yourself and other people to help you think about and reflect on how you work with people and how you maybe live with dementia.